That's what Jesus taught. What was his statement in that most pronounced? And it's very simplistic. The kingdom of God is within you. Seek it first before you do anything. Look inside of yourself first for the kingdom of God. The single eye, the light of the body is the eye. If your eye be single, your whole body shall be filled with light. Jesus taught that one should look within themselves to find the fulfillment of God. And the search should be conducted by stimulating the pineal gland of the brain. He was very specific. And you saw it. If your eye be single, your body will fill with light. And he amplified these instructions by telling us to take no thought. In other words, shut down the brain. Move to a new direction. And he told us to watch. He said very clearly, what I say to you, I say to all. Watch. What are you going to watch? Activate the pineal gland. Eliminate the thoughts of the mind. Watch and look for something otherworldly, something special, something higher, something filled with nature, something filled with love, something filled with light. And you'll never find it by watching politicians or religious people. You've got to go directly to the source which is the supreme light, which is in you. And the Bible is very, very specific. We are children of light. In other words, light, which we are, are not supposed to focus on people or churches or religions. It's all minds and brains and competition. Light, which is we, are to concentrate on the supreme light, which is God. And that supreme light can only be realized by looking within yourself, not looking within me, looking within yourself. So finally we're able to focus on the true natures of ourself and God, and we come up with that beautiful strange word that was coined by Albert Einstein, which is photon. What is a photon? A photon is a particle of light. It's an angle of light comes down from above and it's a messenger particle my goodness gracious what more do you need to understand what an angel is it's light it's an angel it's an angle it's a messenger a messenger of god which is an angel of light that's what a photon is and that's what we are that's what you are i mean over and over and over we struggle with this thing your body is a machine who's operating that machine who's your brain is incapable of creating a single thought. Well, how come you're thinking? Because somebody is programming that thing on top of here. Who's programming it? You are. What are you? You're the photon. You're the angle of light that came down from above. And this light, these photons travel in waves throughout the universe. So we have these things and they travel in waves and suddenly though, when you turn your attention to them, according to the science, the wave collapses to a particle. Boom, and it becomes something. All of a sudden, it becomes reality. But it doesn't become reality until somebody looks at it. See? The phenomenon addressed both by science and by the Bible, and what is it called? It's called a wave offering. Huh? Did you ever know that? Did you ever know that science teaches us about a wave offering and that the Bible teaches us about a wave offering? There's a symphony of sound that flows through the universe. A symphony of sound that creates and impacts all things. And now science is showing us that they believe that crop circles, legitimate crop circles, are formed by sound waves. Frequencies of sound creating these forms on the earth changing things by sound. And now science has told us that they have heard the first primordial sound that actually created the Big Bang. That it was a sound, it was a hum-like sound, an ohm-like sound, if you would, that created the universe. There, th these are waves, they're invisible sound waves, there's invisible light waves, but when we watch them, suddenly we turn our attention, there it is, it, be it collapses and it becomes reality. But it requires an observation. It's all part of life. It's part of nature. It's the way it works. There's nothing religious about it. The light makes an offering, and the light within the physical body responds to that offering. There's a light being out there that makes an offering, and there's a light being inside of you 
that responds to that offering. It's a wave offering. Look at the work, real quick, of John Gribbins, who is one of the most eminent physicists from London, from his book, Schrodinger's Kittens and the Search for Reality. In Overhead 176, he's talking about the interaction of photons and electrons between the universe and the Earth. And in paragraph two, he says it works like this. When an electron vibrates, it attempts to radiate by producing a field which is a wave going into the future and a wave going into the past. So something is happening. The wave heads off into the future until it encounters an electron which can absorb that. So, in other words, we have waves. We have waves of electromagnetic forms between the Earth and us. Something is happening. An electron is vibrating and it's trying to find something to receive it. It's trying to find an absorber. Okay? Now look at what this eminent physicist from London says. Okay? Incredible. The emitter, which is God, can be considered to produce an awful wave which travels to the absorber, that's us, okay? The absorber then returns a confirmation wave to the emitter. In other words, the offering wave is made and the transaction is completed with a handshake across space and time. Well, this is a scientific reality. In other words, this eminent physicist is explaining to us how light interacts with light. It is done by an offering wave. And the Bible is telling us that you make an offering wave to the Lord. I mean, what is this, a big coincidence? Somebody wrote 6,000 years ago about an awful wave in the Bible, and this guy's writing a couple of years ago in London as a physicist about an offering wave of light, and the Bible says that God is light. Is it all a coincidence? Of course it's not a coincidence. It's fact. It's reality. It's the way this works. Huh? It's the way this works. As we saw in these scriptures, that's a requirement of the Bible. Now, what is critical here is to consider that the wave offering in the Bible is to create a communication for that which is above and that which is below. When the Bible says make a wave offering, it's talking about you're doing that because you're trying to communicate with something which is above. And the wave offering spoken of by Kramer and Gribbons, the physicist, is to create a communication from that which is above and that which is below. It's the same thing. Mainly we're talking about a brain. The light in you is connected to the brain in you, which in combination makes you a human being. If that photon in you leaves, the body that you have is no longer a human being. It is what now? It's a dead body. But that's what we are, and we're so attached to the physical, we do not understand that which is the light, the reality. And looking at the universe, so because we're talking about a brain, we're talking about the human brain. What is your human brain? We looked at the universe in overhead 427. It says how the first galaxies were born. And it's talking about the cosmos. And it says it's spongy just like your brain. The early universe contained a series of threads, not unlike a spider web. The universe looks like a spider web. This is NASA talking. A spider web. And it says here, they were found to a uh, filament supporting a popular theory of the cosmic web. The discovery bolsters the concept of the cosmic web. The spider web. Look at overhead 428. In overhead 428, it describes the early universe. Computer models see the variations that the components of the universe, the spider web. So you say, well, so what? what what's, why is that important? Let me show you why it's important in overhead 429. Here's the important part. One of the most important parts of the brain is something called arachnoid. Well, it's a covering that lies between the outer part of the brain and the inner part of the brain, and it's called arachnoid. A, delibrate, a delicate membrane enclosing the spinal cord in the brain. And what is it? It's a spider's web. What is this, a big joke at everybody's? Don't you hear anybody pulling your chain trying to get your attention? And what is this saying? It's saying that you live inside the cosmic brain of God. The brain, the co when you look up into the sky, you're looking up into a brain. It's the same thing. Why is the brain, according to the scientists and the astronomers and the astrophysicists, look just like uh, 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 the universe and the universe looks just like the brain? Because they're one and the same. Why I'm raising this issue is because we're speaking about a wave offering. 
We're speaking about a wave offering described to us by physicists. We're speaking about a wave offering described to us in the Bible. And now we see that the human brain is very similar to the, to the universe as a cosmic web. And we consider the wave offering, we run into an interesting thing when we, dis- when we define that word wave. Look at overhead 455. When we look at the word wave that we've been looking at, and we get down to important derivatives, look at the word we come up with, web, weaving. And what weaves a web? The spider, the spider's web. And so you make an offering wave, and you're making the offering web, and its brain being re- uh, receiving that which is the light coming down from above and interacting with the light which is inside of you, which is operating your brain. So we have the wave offering, not only confirmed by both the Bible and science, you can take that down, but now we have connected it to the web, which we find the brain universe comparison. So how much more proof? I mean, think of this logically. And that's like I said, would it seem reasonable to instruct someone to stand with a piece of meat out on a rock and wave it to some invisible guide in the sky somewhere? Is that what's supposed to be logical? Is that why you have a Bible? The Holy Word of God? Of course not. But you have the Holy Word of God because it's telling something true. It's telling something real. It's telling something that we understand now is being proven by scientists. But unfortunately, those who are following the dictates of these various religious groups aren't allowed to look at this because it's not, it doesn't say that in their books. Well, with the scientific reality of a wave offering in which intelligent lights and tracks intelligent light inside and outside, that to me is credible. That's reasonable. That's in the realm of what you call spirit or soul. It just makes sense. The entire matter that the Bible addresses is talking about the light, the photons, the waves, the particles. God is light. You are light. It is not relating to the body. The body exists for you to have experience, for you to sense, for you to communicate, for you to build. But it is light which runs that body. It is light which operates that body. It is a little light that thinks and programs the brain. You say, well, that's crazy. Read sometimes these quantum physics books and you'll find out about what they call nonsense and uh, what Albert Einstein called spooky action at a distance. It is a wild, wild world. Once the death of the body occurs, the physical senses are gone. At that point, when the light rises out of the body, it doesn't take part in physical things. It is an angel in heaven. It is an angle of light in the ether. It is an entirely different realm. This is where the subject of collapsing the wave to a particle becomes very interesting because it is based on the problem of possibility. It says that when the wave function collapses, possibilities occur. Billions and billions and billions of possibilities. But one thing will happen. When you make an observation and you interact, and whatever course you do, you will cause all of the other realms of possibilities to cease, to vanish. There will only be one thing, and you'll create it by what you do. So all these things are built, wave functions are built around probabilities and possible. In other words, the system is observed and all the possibilities cease to occur except one. The next thought is, is it necessary for someone actually to be watching to clap? Everything in life is in a form of a wave. It's an invisible wave and when something or somebody observes it, Instantly, it collapses to a particle and becomes a reality. That's the way life works. That's why Jesus says, what I say to you, I say to all, watch. Because what you're doing when you're watching inside of yourself, you're watching for God, you're watching for angels, you're watching for spirit, you're watching for reality, you suddenly cause that invisible wave of God to collapse to reality. But what's important is because that's what science is talking about today. Watching, observing, changing by collapsing the wave. Okay? Now I want to show you something that's quite interesting from Gary Zukov from his book, The Dancing Woolly Master. He says, according to classical physics, the light source emitted a real particle, a photon. And it traveled, the detector recorded. According to quantum mechanics, this is not so. No real particle called a photon traveled between the light source and the screen. There was no photon until one actualized. Until then, there was only a wave function. In other words, until then, 
all that existed were tendencies to actualize. So nothing was there until somebody observed it. Something was, nothing was there until somebody looked at it, see? There is no photon. There is only a developing potential. There is only something that might happen. The actuality depends on some kind of observation. Without that observation, only the wave exists. Nothing else exists. Without perception, in other words, if you don't look, the universe continues to generate an endless amount of possibilities. The effect of perception, however, that's when you turn and look, is immediate and dramatic. All the wave function representing the observed system collapses, except one part which actualizes into reality. Some type of detection by an observing system is required to collapse the wave function of the observed system into a physical reality. This is a scientist telling you that. It's not a preacher. It's not a minister. It's not a rabbi. It's not new age. It's not old age. It's the fact. It's the truth. It's the way things work.